This is Seven National News and in our top story. The administration of the UAE project to assist Pakistan or UAE PAP has begun the implementing, implementing the directives of President Hassan Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan to provide urgent humanitarian aid and food supplies valued at $2.5 million to 50,000 families in displaced persons camps in the Banu district of Pakistan. The initiative is the first of its kind to relieve those who fled from military operations in the western region of Waziristan from hunger and malnutrition. It is said that more than 400,000 displaced people fleeing violence in the region arrived in Bannu last week. The first UAE humanitarian aid convoy is due to leave Islamabad on Tuesday to reach the families on Wednesday before the start of the holy month of Ramadan. The project's administration said that the aid comes within the framework of the generous initiatives of President Tizhana Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan and its continuous efforts to help the poor and needy and to provide them with a respectable and decent life. According to Emirates news agency WAM, the UAE PAP stated that 3,550 tons of food rations will be distributed in the form of 71 kilograms of food baskets, each containing, containing rather various food products such as flour, rice, dates, sugar, salt, lentils, oil and tea, sufficient for one person. The UAE PAP has distributed 103,000 food baskets since 2012, valued at $5.520 million, to displaced families in various districts across the country. Social media has radically shifted international communication over the last few years and has also created history by establishing a new ecosystem. That's according to the experts who spoke during the inaugural social media summit. Digital media strategists from a number of corporations participated during the first social media summit where panelists and speakers led discussions on the impact of social media on governments, media and businesses. Speaking during the summit, Usman Sultan, CEO of Do, stated that social media has now created a generation of digital Arabia and the individual empowerment has in return increased the aspirations and expectations of the consumers. According to Usman, constant innovation has built the necessity to evolve, adding that ICT will be the new enabler in the new ecosystem of a smart city, with the citizens and corporations as the consumers. This new age, Usman said, is similar to the previous century's industrial revolution in shaping the future. The thoughts were mirrored by His Excellency Samir al rifai former Prime Minister of Jordan, who added that the large penetration of social media amongst the public and its impact during the Arab Spring in particular has urged politicians and leaders to ensure that they maintain real-time engagement with the citizens. More and more um, people do um, uh, look at social media as the norm. Um, um, if you're not part of the social media, your, uh, your, your media strategy is antiquated. Um, more and more, um, this is one uh, uh, way of communicating. One should be totally transparent, one should be very clear with his messages, one should relay that message uh, directly. And it's the only place where you can have a 24-hour uh, direct discussion um, um, around the clock, whether you're in the office or you're at home. And most importantly, I feel that it is a, it's a great sounding board where you can not only about delivering your message, but actually hearing um, uh, messages that have a direct impact on your decision-making process. The working hours for employees at various ministries and other federal institutions will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. during Ramadan. The information was contained in a circular issued by His Excellency Humaid Mohammed Ubaid al Qattami, Minister of Education, in his capacity as Chairman of the Federal Authority for Government Human Resources and was issued as per Cabinet Decision No. 13 for the year 2012, in implementation of Federal Law No. 11 for the year 2008 and its amendments. The Muslim holy month of Ramadan is expected to start on Sunday, June 29. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and is based on moon sightings. The Sharjah Planetarium said it expects Eid, which is the end of Ramadan, to begin on July 28. Additionally, the Ministry of Labour has announced that working hours for employees in the private sector will be reduced by two hours during Ramadan, with the Ministry adding that no salary reduction should accompany the shorter workday. The announcement is the implementation of Article 65 of Federal Law No. 8 of 1980 on the regulation of labour rel relations and its amendments. 
And the municipality of Abu Dhabi announced on Sunday that UAE citizens will get subsidized foodstuff during the holy month of Ramadan. According to officials quoted from the food distribution centers, the move is part of the municipality's endeavors to provide citizens multiple food items and consumable options through a flexible and express delivery process. The newly added items include a variety of juices and syrups, beans, powdered milk and pastas. Masafi water and tissue papers are also recent inclusions. The centers will also stock tea bags, bulk tea, Arabian coffee, milk, salt and cardamom, taking the number of subsidized food items during Ramadan to 38. In addition, the municipality is planning to include more items such as frozen vegetables and yogurt. While the municipality centers are open from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. during Ramadan, they will follow the timing set for government departments in Abu Dhabi on weekdays. Currently, 48,000 Emirati families hold foodstuff distribution cards. The number of transactions at the foodstuff distribution centers from the start of this year to May end was over 100,000. School buses in Dubai are likely to have seat belts soon, with the Roads and Transport Authority looking at ways to improve safety standards for school transportation. According to current rules, seat belts are mandatory only on the front and back rows of school buses. And RTA has launched a study that could lead to a revision of the rules. School transport in Dubai is regulated by RTA through a decree issued by the Dubai Executive Council in 2008, following which RTA published a school transport manual, which is updated annually. The manual clearly specifies roles of all stakeholders, as well as the technical specifications of buses and the rules that drivers and operators need to follow. Dr. Yusuf Al-Ali, the CEO of RTA's public transport agency, was quoted in a local report as saying that the RTA is constantly looking at upgrading and revising its regulations as well as investigating ways that can improve road safety, particularly safety of children on roads. Al-Ali added that the RTA have launched a study to find out the feasibility of having seat belts on all school buses and the kind of impact it will have. The RTA monitors 4,800 registered school buses in Dubai, transporting 150,000 pupils to private schools. And finally in the bulletin, Arabian oryx have been one of the most culturally significant animals for the UAE and had been classified as endangered or extinct in the wild. However, with much credit towards the Alain Zoo's breeding program, the species is now classified as near threatened. As a result of the breeding program, more than 5,000 oryx have been released by the zoo into the wild, which has eventually changed the classification by the International Union for Conservation of Nature's Red List for Threatened Species from Extinct in the, in the Wild to Near Threatened. As part of the conservation efforts, the zoo had focused on captive management and breeding, propagation and reintroduction programs. During the 1970s, the Arabian oryx had suffered greatly from poaching, urbanization and the loss of desert areas with adequate plants and shade. Since then, the late found founding father, Sheikh Zayed, instructed officials to put in place programs to breed more Arabian oryx in an effort to preserve the species and highlight its cultural importance to the country.